We've all been unfairly judged in our time, and let's not pretend that we haven't done our fair share of uninformed judging, too. Like it or not, prejudice is a common human condition. Prejudice just means prejudgment. It's an unjustified, typically negative attitude toward an individual or group. Prejudicial attitudes are often directed along the lines of gender, ethnic, socioeconomic status, or culture. And by definition, prejudice is not the same thing as stereotyping or discrimination, although the three phenomena are intimately related. People may distrust a female mechanic, that's a prejudicial attitude, but it's rooted in a stereotype or overgeneralized belief about a particular group. Although it's often discussed in a negative way, stereotyping is really more of a general cognitive process that doesn't have to be negative. It can even be accurate at times. Like, I have the stereotype that all crows have wings, injuries and birth defects aside, and that happens to be true. But on the negative end, your prejudice against female mechanics may be rooted in some inaccurate stereotype about women's skills with a socket wrench. And when stereotypical beliefs, combined with prejudicial attitudes and emotions like fear and hostility, they can drive the behavior we call discrimination. So a prejudiced person won't necessarily act on their attitude. Say you believe in the stereotype that overweight people are lazy. You might then feel a prejudiced distaste when you see someone who appears overweight. But if you act on your prejudice and, say, refuse to hire them for a job or don't let them sit at your lunch counter, then you've crossed over into discriminating against them. The all right, so everybody has prejudice, everybody discriminates. But when you back a group's, I see institution, I'm missing a T. <laughs> when you grab, uh, back a group's collective prejudice with control of all of the institutions, you transform it into something very different. Now the very society, the fabric, the default of the society will reproduce the discrimination without individual actors needing to do anything at all, right? Uh, it's not dependent on each individual person. The system is set up because the group that holds the power and the control of the institutions embeds its prejudice into the institutions, into the fabric or the very water of the society. If black women held most positions of power, then you'd agree that all black women have an advantage because they'd create a system by black women for black women in which being black and female is the standard and the norm, and therefore white men would be disadvantaged along with everyone else, not due to individual black women being prejudiced, but because of the system, hence the term systemic oppression. Now look at the systems we've created. So just, I mean, even the way we have the conversation is part of how oppression works, right? It's so normalized, it's so taken for granted um, that it's really hard to see, right? Even when it's in front of us. So let's take a look here. These are the Fortune 500 CEOs, and I, I really do believe that this is the power, right? The 1% is the power. 98% male, U.S. Senate, 80% male. This is 2016. Come on, you know what's coming. House of Representatives, 82% male. Supreme Court, 66% male. Not trying to pick on the Republicans, but when I see something like this, it's gonna go in my slideshow. Just take it in, take it in. Patriarchy, <laughs> okay. Presidents and presidency and vice presidency, always 100% male, okay? So I'll ask you again, if they wanted to, could they? Okay, see that difference? Like 15, 20 seconds of basic statistics in front of all of us. So keep noticing all the ways that oppression works. The same groups that have controlled our institutions continue to control our institutions. And I'm confident that if Hillary becomes president, patriarchy will not end on that day. <laughs> Any more than it ended in 1920. And just to throw in some culture here, this was on last month's issue of Vanity Fair. Why late night TV is better than ever. Well, I guess from some viewpoint, right? Just patriarchy is so embedded um, and, and you have to start to look at ideologies and all of the ways that we rationalize and justify. If you want to tease out how we can produce the same inequity and have people individually think that this isn't happening, okay? And by the way, uh, you know how a Facebook will send out these, on holidays, they send out like happy 4th of July, happy this, happy that. This actually came out um, this year on August 26th, so I, I suppose suffrage was passed on the 26th of August, 1920. Um, and then somebody did this. Which women got the right to vote in 1920? 
And that's another example of how oppression works, right? The dominant group's experience gets to stand in for everyone's experience, right? We were oppressed as women, but we were elevated as white women.